Hello, I am Lano Fletcher. I will be your guide today. Please enjoy and join me as we learn the true story of the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal, a symbol of grandeur and opulence, the likes of which the world has never known. Its beauty is unparalleled, its scope unfathomable. But what is the story behind this iconic creation? Why was it built? Why is it so heralded and beloved? It all began as a love story. This epic tale begins in 1607 Lahore, in what is modern-day Pakistan. It was here that Shah Jahan, the soon-to-be fifth Mughal emperor, became engaged to Mumtaz Mahal, the love of his life. They would have to wait five years to marry, however, based on a date assigned by the court astrologer as the most conducive to ensuring the happiest of marriages. In the meantime, Shah Jahan embarked on two marriages, the first of which was to Princess Kandahari Bagum, with whom he had his first child. This was a political marriage, officially ushering Jahan into manhood and giving him an official military rank, important steps to establishing his own claim to the throne. Finally, in 1612, Shah Jahan, aged 20, married Mumtaz Mahal on the auspicious date chosen by court astrologers. The marriage was a happy one, and Jahan remained devoted to Mumtaz, she bore him 14 children, out of whom seven survived into adulthood. On July 7, 1631, Mumtaz Mahal died while giving birth to the couple's 14th child. The impact of her death was so profound that Shah was inspired to construct a majestic temple to house and honor his beloved. Thus, the Taj Mahal, named for Mumtaz Mahal, was commissioned. In 1658, Shah Jahan fell ill, leading to a war of succession among his four sons, where his third son, Aurangzeb, triumphed. In short order, Shah Jahan was declared incompetent, removed from the throne, and put under house arrest. Then, in a final heartbreak, Shah Jahan was kept from visiting his beloved Taj Mahal for the remainder of his life. Shah Jahan's beloved daughter, Princess Jahanar, stayed with him throughout his exile, and upon his death in 1666, sent his body up the river toward the Taj Mahal. Today, it is interred next to the body of his beloved Mumtaz Mahal. Construction on the Taj Mahal began in 1632 and completed in its entirety in 1653, employing some 20,000 laborers under the guidance of the court architect to the emperor, Usted Ahmed Lahari. The building was constructed using white marble inlaid with semi-precious stones instead of the then traditional red sandstone, ushering in a new level of refinement in Mughal architecture. Arguably, the Taj Mahal's most spectacular feature is the marble dome that surmounts the tomb. It is nearly 115 feet tall and is decorated with a lotus design to accentuate its height. The shape of the dome is emphasized by four smaller domed kiosks placed at its corners, which replicate the onion shape of the main dome. The dome and kiosks are topped by a gilded phenyle, which mixes traditional Persian and Hindustani decorative elements. The exterior decorations of the Taj Mahal are among the finest in Mughal architecture. The decorative elements are created by applying paint, stucco, stone inlays, or carvings. Throughout the complex are passages from the Quran that comprise some of the decorative elements. The opulence of the Taj Mahal's interior is unrivaled with inlay work that uses a lapidary of precious and semi-precious gemstones. Together, they form several designs of twining vines, fruits, and flowers. The interior walls are over 80 feet tall and are topped with a replicate or false version of the outer dome decorated with a sun motif. 
The four upper arches form balconies or viewing areas, and each balcony's exterior window has an intricate screen or jolie cut from marble. Each chamber wall is highly decorated with dado boss relief, intricate lapidary inlay, and refined calligraphy panels, which reflect in miniature detail the design elements seen throughout the exterior of the complex. Calligraphy is heavily incorporated throughout the Taj Mahal's design. It is used in several forms, such as passages from the Quran, and several spiritual motifs, as well as marking areas such as the tombs of Shah Jahan and Mumtaz Mahal. Most don't realize that there are in fact two tomb sites. One is the ornately decorated facade displayed for public viewing at the center of the Taj Mahal. The other is the actual tomb where both Mumtaz and Shah Jahan are laid to rest. This tomb is located at the lower level of the building, is deliberately undecorated to adhere to Muslim tradition and not open to the public. The gardens of the Taj Mahal are lavish and symbolic. They are meant to represent paradise, an idea brought by the Mughals from Persia. After the British took control of India, the gardens were altered to fit subtler British tastes. While the elaborate decoration of the Taj Mahal is its most obvious attraction, its construction was less aesthetic and more strategic. The four famous minarets that surround the complex were deliberately tilted as to fall away from the tombs in the event of a collapse, preventing the grave from incurring any damage. In 1942, the government erected a scaffolding to disguise the building in anticipation of air attacks by the Japanese Air Force. During the India-Pakistan Wars of 1965 and 1971, scaffolding were again erected to mislead bomber pilots. In recent years, there have been calls for the structure to be classified as a Hindu temple. This stems from accusations that the site of the mausoleum was originally an ancient shrine to the Hindu god Shiva. In 2015, a petition was started calling for ownership to be transferred to Hindus for worship and for all Muslim religious activity to be blocked and graves to be removed. This petition has led to several court cases that are still pending. An epic love, centuries of war, familial conflict, cultural changes, controversies, and threats to its existence. In the face of hundreds of years of change, the Taj Mahal continues to endure as a symbol of opulence, vision, and cultural might that have solidified its legacy as one of the great wonders of the world. Earlier I mentioned that Shah Jahan and Mumtaz Mahal's actual tombs were deliberately undecorated to adhere to Muslim tradition. What is this tradition? Clue, it's considered a feminine virtue in most cultures. Still haven't got it? Here's another slide to buy you extra time. Give up? Answer. It is the tradition of modesty. Reflecting on the 2015 petition calling for the end of all Muslim religious activity and removal of all Muslim graves from the Taj Mahal, I couldn't help but think. What if someone tried to change my identity? To try and erase and make me over. Into an image they would find acceptable. Would I put up a fight and resist it? Would I just give in and fade away? 
I imagine this question to be on the minds of all who love the Taj Mahal. How important is my identity to me?